You can indeed have too much of a good thing. When we look back at some of the older folding phones like my Galaxy Z Fold 4, and you look at just how thick, how brick-like that device was, I think it's pretty obvious that something needed to change. It did, in fact, need to get quite a bit thinner. But as we now look at devices like the Galaxy Z Fold 7, which is 4.2 millimeters thick when it is opened, I think it's fair to begin to question if that is too thin, if that is a thickness that is now beginning to necessitate some negatives, some compromises being made with that device. When you are that thin, you are either going to have a smaller battery because there's just not enough space in there, or you're going to have to use a newer battery technology like silicon carbon, and there are some reasons why some brands aren't doing that. So that does kind of lead you down a path where you have a little bit of a quandary to solve. Today we're going to be looking at a recent leak about the Google Pixel 10 Pro Fold that I think highlights a difference in approach between Samsung and Google, as Samsung seems to really believe they need to be competing when it comes to that thickness. They need to be right there with the thinnest folding devices on the market. Google seems to think that they are thin enough. You guys might remember a couple of weeks back, I actually got my hands on a Pixel 10 Pro Fold case quite a bit early, and with that case, I was able to do some comparisons and determine that the Pixel 10 Pro Fold is going to be basically the exact same thickness as the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. Now, the good news is that's not a super thick device. When it's opened, it's 5.1 millimeters, so we're talking about less than a millimeter of difference between that and the Galaxy Z Fold 7. That might be significant to some, but in the real world, it's not a huge difference. Now, due to a report from Android Headlines, we have some word on, allegedly, what Google is doing with that extra millimeter of thickness. And I have put together this table, which has a whole bunch of information we can quickly go over. And rather than talking about everything else first and burying the lead this time, I'm just going to go straight to what I think all of you want to hear about. It's the battery size. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold has a 4650 milliamp hour battery, which is already about 250 milliamp hours better, bigger I should say, than the Galaxy Z Fold 7. The Pixel 10 Pro Fold, as you can see down here, it's jumping up to a 5,015 milliamp hour battery. They are saying we are fine being about five millimeters thick. We're just going to pack in an even larger battery. And that, I think, is going to make a pretty big difference, especially when you factor in that we are going from the Tensor G4 to the Tensor G5, and that is not just a next generation processor from Google, it's actually being made by TSMC. This is a three nanometer process, and it should be so much more efficient than the Tensor G4. If you factor all this together, it's a bigger battery, it is a much, much, much more efficient processor. The Pixel 10 Pro Fold might have really solid battery life. Now, let me be clear about this. This is not Google switching to a silicon carbon battery. They are still using a traditional lithium ion battery. Now, it might be a bit denser. Samsung has been doing a lot of that lately, messing around with these more traditional battery technologies to make them more dense. They did this with the Edge. I suspect they did this with the Z Fold 7 as well. But again, not silicon carbon, just a normal old battery. They just put a bigger one in there. Something else I think that's worth pointing out is the charging speed. They're going from 21 watt wired and 8 watt wireless to 23 watt wired and 15 watt wireless with Qi 2. Now those are both not like super impressive numbers. But I want to throw something out here to you that I think might make this seem a little bit better to you. Yes, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold was rated at 21 watts. And the Z Fold 6, just for context here, was rated at 25 watts. But as someone who has extensively used both of those devices, my SIM is in a Z Fold 6 right now, and you guys know how much I've used my Pixel 9 Pro Fold. The Z Fold 6 charges much, much faster than my Pixel 9 Pro Fold. And I think that a lot of that comes down to thermal issues. When these devices are charging, they get kind of hot, and then they have to throttle down the wattage. With Tensor G5, I think that there's a decent chance 
that even though it's only a 2 watt improvement in terms of the speed rating, I think we're going to stick at 23 watts much more frequently, and that might lead to a bigger jump in charging speed than you would expect simply from that 2 watt rating increase. Now, it's also true that the battery is getting larger, so that might offset that just a little bit in terms of what you are expecting. But again, new processor, going to run cooler, should actually stick to that rating much more frequently. Something else I want to quickly touch on that I think really, really clearly illustrates the difference in strategy between Google and Samsung is the camera hardware. I think all of you know by now that the Z Fold 7 is using a 200 megapixel sensor for its primary camera. It's like 40 something percent larger than last year's camera, last year's sensor, I should say. And because of that, and because of the fact that the body has gotten so much thinner, that camera bump sticks up really, really far. But it seems like Samsung has decided people really want a truly flagship primary camera sensor on the Z Fold. So we're going to put it in there and you're just going to have a really, really thick camera really, really large camera bump. What is Google doing with their slightly thicker device? Well, they are not doing that. The camera hardware, according to Android, uh, I think Android Authority is where I got this information from. It's linked in there somewhere. They are keeping the camera hardware effectively exactly the same as last year, with exception to their primary sensor, which is going from, as you can see here, Pixel 9 Pro Fold used a 48 megapixel Sony IMX 787 sensor. This year, they're going to be using a Samsung GN8. That is literally a smaller sensor. They are putting a smaller sensor in the Pixel 10 Pro Fold. While Samsung puts in a 44% larger sensor, Google is saying, it doesn't matter. We're going to keep our camera bump relatively small, nothing too crazy. We're just going to put in a smaller camera sensor. It's the same sensor as what is in the Pixel 9a, which is going to aid them when it comes to their processing. And we're going to lean on computational photography. And it's probably going to take really, really good photos. But again, that is a major divergence. Google says, smaller sensor, software is fine, smaller camera bump. Samsung says, larger sensor, flagship sensor, gigantic bump, just really interesting to me in terms of the strategies. And I think that it's going to be kind of interesting to see what people prefer. Do you want that really big sensor? Do you want that smaller camera bump? And where, how does the camera performance actually compare? If it's anything close to the 9 Pro Fold versus something like my S25 Ultra, which is, in both cases, a similar sensor, well, the Z Fold might have a pretty big advantage when it comes to low light and video, but we have to wait for these devices to be out to be able to actually determine that or not. Of course, if you really wanted to dig into this whole concept of the divergent paths of Google's folds and Samsung's folds, you could talk about software for about three straight days. The things that Google just hasn't prioritized, like split screen with more than two apps, proper floating windows, things that just should be there, should have been there a long time ago and still aren't there, things they just don't think are important that Samsung clearly does think is important. I just, I find this whole topic to be absolutely fascinating but the main point of this i think is that samsung's going thinner sacrificing some battery google is not going thinner and adding a larger battery and i think that is something that a lot of you are going to find very very important let me know your thoughts in the comments down below thanks for watching subscribe for more content just like this and until next time stay nerdy my friends <laughs>